friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india the purpose of this video is to teach small incision cataract surgery to ophthalmology residents all around the world apply few drops of povidone iodine over the ocular surface and wash the ocular surface thoroughly with ringa lactate or bss and now turn the eyeball down with a muscle hook hold the superior rectus tendon and pass a superior rectus brittle suture this helps a lot particularly to the beginners it makes the eyeball stable while doing quartry while making the tunnel and many other steps so the brittle suture has been applied we go to a little higher magnification and our conjunctival peritomy is being done for about two and a half clock hours from 11 o'clock to on 30 o'clock you can see this is a mature white cataract the patient cannot afford echoemulsification and this is a good option for those who cannot and if we do this surgery with lot of care the results are very good induced astigmatism is within one diopter and if we apply the if we place the incision on the steep axis it can actually correct the existing astigmatism so the conjunctival peritomy has been done the tenons has been trimmed a bit because if the tenons is exposed it can cause granuloma postoperatively now weight field cautery is done very mild cautery is done just touch over the blood vessels and that's it and now is the time to place the incision i take a Bart Parker blade 15 number and place the initial incision this is about one third depth of the sclera you cannot teach this this is just a judgment the beginners can use guarded knives for placing the initial incision now this is a crescent blade I am making the depth equal all around so that the making the tunnel becomes easier now I start at the center go into clear cornea for about one and a 1.5 millimeter and sweep backward and to the left and thus I do the tunnel on the left side this is surgeon's choice you can do the tunnel from on end to the other end or from center to the right first and then come back to the left this is your choice and now I'm making the tunnel on the right side from center to the right see the superiectus brittle suture is holding the eyeball I don't have to use the fixation forceps with my left hand if we use the fixation forceps sometimes we cause laceration of the conjunctiva there can be subconjunctival hemorrhage so that can be avoided if we place a superior rectus brittle suture but we can use the fixation forceps carefully carefully and we can avoid the superior rectus brittle suture now after making the side port at 9 o'clock and injecting an air bubble the anti-capsule is being stained with tripe and blue dye now the dye is washed out I always wash the dye out because sometimes there are some particles and sometimes the lot of dye remains goes behind the iris so it is a good habit to wash the dye out and probably this will reduce the incidence of in the post-op period 
visco is injected in the SE and it is placed over the corneal epithelium. Now we are going to do capsulorexis. This is a non intumescent cataract, so we can do rexis with the needle very well. So our capsular tag is raised, the capsular tag has been evoted, and the capsular tag is being guided so that we get a rexis. At 3 o'clock, the rexis tended to go to periphery, but we could bring it back. And now we are almost. Yes, it is done. The rexis is completed. And now some more visco is injected and now the tunnel is to be opened. Go to the anterior extreme of the tunnel and then go downward and cut when you go forward. So the tunnel is open now. Inner opening is little larger than the outer opening. Outer opening is about 7 millimeter. Inner opening is about 8 millimeter or 8.5 millimeter. And now hydrodissection and prolapse of the nucleus. This is 7 millimeter. Let us see the size width of the main incision yes it is about 7 millimeter now hydro dissection is done very gently we have to do it and after injecting fluid we have to decompress we have to tap on the nucleus and when you rotate the nucleus keep irrigating fluid so that the antechamber uh, remains deep so when you are rotating the nucleus, keep injecting ringolactate or BSS so that the anterior chamber remains deep. Now inject visco both in front and behind the lens mass. And now I use an irrigating vectus. This is a very safe instrument. It goes behind and pulls the nucleus very gently. I attach this irrigating vectus to a bottle so that I don't have to inject I don't have to inject fluid which may be more than required. So the bottle is about 100 centimeter above the head and this does the job. Now cortical cleanup is done with the help of a 23 gauze Simco. This can be a 22 gauze or 21 gauze Simco also but in that case we have to make the side port larger. First we remove the sub side port cortex and then we go through the side port and remove the cortex from all around. At this moment the cortex from 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock is being removed and now cortex from 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock is removed then from 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock. So the cortex is nicely cleaned. Now visco is injected to fill up the capsular bag and the anterior chamber and now is the time to implant an intraocular lens. This is a 6 mm optic PMMA intraocular lens from Appa Sami Associates. It is Liberty. It can be any lens of your choice. And it can be premium category lens if you plan SICS to reduce existing astigmatism. So the lens is in the capsular bag. Now thorough cleaning of visco has to be done. First irrigate some ringolactate or PSS in the anterior chamber. Now go behind the eye well and irrigate 
BSAs are being elected in the capsular bag. By this irrigation, most of the visco will come out and then irrigate and aspirate for some time. And thus, all the visco will come out. It should be done very nicely, otherwise, if the visco is retained, it can cause raised IOP in the post op period. This is moxifloxacin. Now, the side boat is closed by hydrating corneal stroma on either side of this stab incision. Always hydrate the scleral side of the side boat, not the corneal side. And now, this is final lavage of the anterior chamber and now the antechamber has to be formed very nicely and now we have to oppose the conjunctiva to the limbus very nicely and this job should be very meticulous only then we get a very good result this is subconjunctival injection of gentamicin and dexamethasone. And now the superior rectus brittle suture, it has done its job and we can remove this suture now. And now I am going to show a releasable suture to oppose the conjunctiva. Take two bites in this way. Now pull the thread and now take three loops, one, two, three. Hold the thread here, pull it and now cut the thread with the needle close to the knot. And now when the patient is sitting on the slit lamp in the OPD, Take a sterile straight forceps, hold this suture and just pull it out. So very simple to re remove this suture in the OPD. Watch it again, bite, pull the thread nicely and take appropriate length for making the loops one two three loops hold the thread here and pull it and now cut the thread with the needle short the other thread which you will pull keep it little longer this releasable suture can be removed after 72 hours or even after four, five or seven days. Now remove the speculum and conclude the case. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a comprehensive cataract surgeon. Not only a good FACO surgeon, be a good SICS surgeon also. There are cases where FACO may be dangerous or there are cases where you may have to convert to SICS because of suppose the rexis has run to periphery and the nucleus is very hard and it is dangerous to continue with FACO. In those cases you can convert to SICS if you know the technique. So be a comprehensive cataract surgeon and not only a FACO surgeon or a SICS surgeon. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.